Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 46. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 6, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet Equivalent Earnings. Now, here's the situation pay periods. They could be weekly, bi weekly, semi monthly, monthly. Sometimes we get a, some different jobs. And here, these are all accounting clerk jobs. And how in the world are we going to compare if our goal is to get the maximum gross earnings and we have this amount for weekly, this amount for biweekly, this amount for semi-monthly, how in the world do we compare? Well, that's where figuring out equivalent earnings comes in. Now, the first thing is let's figure out how many periods, how many paychecks there are for each one of these periods weekly. Well, that's going to be 52, right? But what about bi-weekly? Well, bi means two, so it means every two weeks. So whether we, the way we figure that out is we say, hey, all the weeks divided by two, right? So that would be 26. Semi-monthly, well, what does semi mean? Semi means half. Now, this means every half month. For example, you might get always paid on the 10th and the 25th. Now, there's different numbers of days each month. So semi-monthly, the number of semi-monthly payments and bi-weekly payments are not the same. Well, you know, before I even calculate this one, I'm just going to go straight to monthly. So you get paid uh, one time each month, right? Well, I know there's 12 months. All right, so that's 12. Well, what does that make semi-monthly? 12 times 2. Right, so there's 24. So weekly one time each week, bi-weekly every two weeks, semi-monthly two times a month, and then uh, monthly. So our goal, convert these. And let's just do it over to the side here and figure out annual. Whoops, I can't spell. You all know that, though. OK, so annual. Well. Well, let's take our weekly, and what do we do? Oh, yeah, times 52. Oh, OK, so now I have a method of comparing all these. I'll convert them all up to annual and then compare. All right, so I'm going to say this. We'll buy weekly. Oh, OK, so I have to multiply that times 26. How about semi-monthly? Oh, well, here's the semi-monthly pay times well, OK, 12, 12 times 2 is 24, so I got 24. And finally, monthly equals this times 12. Ooh, I was for sure that was going to be the best uh, shop good accounting clerk job. No way. Looks like it's the smallest. It looks like, wow, the bi-weekly one is the most. Now let's take this one step further. We're going to come down here. And we want to, we have our same pay, weekly, biweekly, semi monthly, monthly. But I want to convert this weekly pay to everything weekly, bi weekly, semi monthly, monthly, and yearly. Because if you're comparing jobs, you may need to go to any one of these time periods. All right? All right, so let's just start here. Well, weekly, oh, OK, so that's just that. Now I'm going from weekly to bi weekly. Well, we can just multiply by 2, right? Weekly, bi-weekly. Bi means 2, so I multiply it by 2. Now, what about semi-monthly? Well, I certainly can't multiply by 2. <clears throat> the way you have to do this is you have to take the weekly, convert it up to annual, and then divide by 24. So you ready? Equals this times, well, it's a weekly here, right? So to get it up to annual, 52. And then divide it by, well, how many semi monthly periods are there in one year? 24. Monthly. Well, I can't just take the weekly times 4. <laughs> Don't do that, right? Because um, there's not always exactly four weeks in a month. So again, I do the same trick. Oh, that's the weekly. I get it up to annual by multiplying it by 52. And then that number I divide by monthly, so I t divide it by 12. 
By the way, you can do this in a two-step process. You go, oh, okay, right? So that seems uh, that's the correct annual, right? And then I divide it by 12. And finally, yearly, I just say equals this times 52. Now let's do bi-weekly. So I'm going to click right here. All right, so we have a bi-weekly, and it's weekly. OK, so these are both related to week, so I can simply take bi-weekly and divide it by 2. How about bi-weekly? Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Oh, yeah, just that. All right, now, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, we're going to convert it right here. Ah, but semi-monthly is 24 times a year, and bi-weekly is 26. So we can't just multi um, take the bi-weekly and say that's equal, because they're not the same number of pay periods. We have to do our same trick. We have to get the bi-weekly up to annual. So bi-weekly times 26. And now we can divide by 24, right? All right, now monthly equals, well, we can just take bi-weekly and multiply by 2. No, 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 because each month doesn't have exactly four weeks, right? So we have to do our same trick, get the bi-weekly up to annual. So we take the bi-weekly times 26, and then we divide it by, oh yeah, monthly, 12. Tab. Yearly, we're going to take bi-weekly times 26. Control Enter. Semi-monthly, so we need to calculate, uh, convert this amount weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, monthly, and yearly. All right, so here, semi-monthly and weekly, there are different number of periods. This is 24. This is 52. So I'm going to have to convert this first to annual and then divide it by 52. All right, ready? So we take our semi-monthly. Oh, yeah, semi-monthly so means there's 24 periods. That's the annual amount. And then we divide it by 52. All right, how about semi-monthly and bi-weekly? Oh, no, not at all. These are not uh, related in any way. This is 24. This is 26, so we'll do our same trick. Oh, there's the semi-monthly times 24 divided by the number of bi-weekly periods, 26. Now, semi-monthly, this is a hard one. Oh, yeah, we just take that amount right there. Now, monthly and semi-monthly. Now, these are related, right? This is monthly. This, this is every month. This is every half month. So we can simply do what? Take our semi-monthly and multiply by 2. Now, notice monthly, semi-monthly, we multiplied by 2. When we did, week, when we did weekly and bi-weekly, we multiplied by 2 also, right? Because this is Weekly, bi-weekly is double that. All right, yearly, we simply take our semi-monthly times 24. All right, now monthly. This is every 12 times. This is weekly. We cannot relate these directly, so we have to say, hey, monthly times 12. That gives us our annual divided by 52. Bi-weekly. Not related in any way, so we have to do our same trick. Let's get the monthly payment up to annual times 12 and divide by how many bi weekly periods in a year? 26. Semi monthly, ah, these are related, right? It's half a month, month, so I simply go this divided by 2. Right? Oops, I clicked on the wrong one. Now, one way to uh, edit your formula is to point to the edge, and with your move cursor, just click and drag. Now that's related. We went from month to a half a month here for, and we divided, right? Bi weekly to weekly. Well, what do we do? This is the double the weekly. This is weekly, so we divided by two. Anytime you see a week and a week, or a month. And a month like that, then you can simply do a, a, one of the simpler calculations where you don't have to get it up to annual first. All right, so monthly to monthly. <laughs> All right. And finally, yearly times 12. 
All right, and so this kind of calculation is helpful. Here we did the full gamut. We did every single possible uh, calculation here. But usually you're given numbers like this, and you just need to straight compare them, so you go to annual. Now, this that's it for section 6.1, so you can go do your homework. I'm going to show you an advanced trick here with a table like this. It's not required, so if you don't want to see it, you can click pause. But um, OK, down here, I just want to uh, look here at each one of these. OK, so yeah, we were on the weekly, so we had to multiply by 52, right? Multiply by 52. So this whole row, or at least for a few of them, we needed to get up to annual. Uh, Bi-weekly. Oh, we had a 26 we had to multiply by, and 26. So it looks like for this row here, we're going to need to use 26 often right, in our formulas. Similarly, when we get to semi, that we had to multiply by 24, multiply by 24. So let's come down here and think about this. Weekly, if we put the number 52 here, we could get in every one of these cells the annual amount. That's sort of what we did up here, right? Here, weekly. We put a 26 here because we, we could calculate the annual for all of these. Now, if we had the annual for all of these, we could also put numbers up here to, that relate to uh, the division we have to do. So if we have an annual here, to get to weekly, we do divide by 52. If we had an annual here in this cell, to get it down to biweekly, we divide by 26, divide by 24, divide by 12. And the trick is yearly. Right? Even though I absolutely, uh, you know, I don't need it here, I could just go um, the biweekly amount times 26. The fact that I have all these numbers here um, allows me to do one formula that will work in all the cells. Now, this is going to involve mixed cell references, and this is way out of the scope of this class. If you're in my Business 216 class or Advanced Excel class, of course, you know we do a lot of mixed cell references. So here's the formula. I'm going to take this weekly amount here. Now when I copy the formula this way, I need it locked. So I'm in the A column, so I'm going to have to lock the A, the column reference. But when I move down, that blue box needs to move down. So there's going to be no dollar sign in front of the row reference 29. And the way you do that is you hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Dollar sign in only, front of, only in front of the column, but not the row times, because I need to get this uh, everything in this rule up to annual. Now the same thing holds here. When I copy the formula this way, I need that H locked down, because broop, that 52 is in the H column. But when I move it down to this row, the green dancing ants needs to move down to the 26. So I'm going to lock 1, 2, 3. Hit the F4 key three times to lock the column, but not the row. And finally, divided by this right here. When I copy it down, each one of these cells needs that 52. But So I need to lock that C27 going down. Notice it's row 27, so the dollar sign would go there. But when I move over to here, the purple box needs to move. So I'm going to hit F4 twice to lock the row reference, but not the column. Control Enter. And then we can copy this cell down, let go, grab the fill handle again, and copy it over. And I'm going to check, if I put a formula here with a mixed cell references, I'm going to check the diagonally furthest one away, click in the cell F2. Wow, that is totally magic. Look at that. And I can see the green one kind of there also. All right, um, that's it for this video. We'll see you next video. We'll start section 6.2. See you next video.